uh, ladies and gentlemen, take home exercise. In this take home exercise, I asked you to um, open up a, um, a file called uh, dates.txt, which has some formatted information, and these include uh, a set of dates in a variety of formats. So some of them are day of week, Sunday, um, month, uh, and then a sort of two-digit day, and then year. Um, others of them are numbered months uh, and, and days without the two digits. Um, basically four different, different formats here, right? And to give you a sense of what that looked like, just to remind you, it looks something like this. So we have these various dates, and each of them is associated with some and I was asking you to please um, parse out these dates and canonicalize them in a way that would basically put them into a standard format. Four different types of dates and I wanted you to sort of go process them and output them in a st standardized form. Now I was hoping to use this to expose you to a couple of features of Scala firsthand, rather than secondhand as I'm doing things or, or with slides. Um, what, what approach in Scala, um, or what types of Scala objects, uh, what types of Scala um, constructs are useful for, for a task like this? Match syntax. Okay, match syntax, good. And matching what type of thing? Regular, Regular expression. expression, okay, good. Um, so there's two parts of it there, and part of what goes on matches is something called destructuring. Does anyone remember what's meant by destructuring? Yeah, so it's it's taking a single a single thing, in this case a regular expression, um, or a bunch of matches, I should say, in a regular expression, and it's breaking them into pieces up into pieces that compose them. So you may remember from way back when, <clears throat> we had two different things. I, I feel really bad because it looks like the cookies only made it halfway over. <laughs> so I kind of feel like I should favor this side of the room in my pedagogical exertions um, <laughs> to help make up for the lack of sustenance passed on. Um, uh, is this being recorded? Um, so uh, <laughs> let's get, let's confirm it. It is okay. Good. Good. Um, so we had within Scala two sort of opposite things occurring when it came to Scala uh, uh, classes and objects. One was we had this apply, and then we had unapply. Okay, um, which at first may sound odd. Um, so if you have an object. Oh, right. Um, and you have an apply method in it that you define. You have a def apply, right? Um, da -da -da. What does that allow you to do? What does that allow you to write? Yeah, it's it's like a constructor. And so often we have a companion object. Oh, for a class of, right? Because we'd like to be able to write, instead of new O, um, you'd like to be able to write, and so, so if, you, if you want to create something, you have a val, uh, you know, V of type O. Instead of writing new O, hmm, that's a new, yeah. um, so instead of writing that, We'd like to be able to just write what? Well, in, in some things inside of it. We'd like to be able to write what? Just O, like that. We'd like to be able to write that. And that's what having an apply in the object would do. What if we had an apply in the class? What would that allow us to do? Yeah, yeah. Then if we had an apply in the class, that, that would allow us here to do to write sort of V 
of some things as if we're almost as if V is a is a method call or something like that, as if we're calling V. That's that's what an apply in the class does. But a, an apply in the object, in this case it's gonna be the object regex, for example, um, uh, allows you to just um, use the the object name, in this case, O, and put some things in it. And we've seen that many times before. Okay, so um, uh, here, let's, let's, let's go engage in, uh, in, in some uh, Scala, uh, shall we not? It's been a while since we indulged, and uh, it'll be uh, nice to reacquaint ourselves. So here, ladies and gentlemen, is the Scala REPL, the Scala uh, read eval print loop. And I would argue that this pattern that we've seen here with apply, we've seen in many cases. Where, where have we seen that? A lot with collections. Well, you may recall we could do, you know, my array, right? Equals array of, you know, uh, 3.14159, I'll stop, um, 2.71. Uh, 1.0 and 0, 0.0 um, and you know I could have called that my beautiful array but it's the point is I'm I'm calling array as if it's a, as if it's a function a method or something like that I'm calling it calling it um, as, is, as if array is itself a function that's because there's an object called array that accompanies the class array there's a class array this this uh, val, this my r here, um, that's an object of class array double. Mm -hmm. um, and because array, the object, had an apply method, we could do this array of 3.14 to build that object. Because, because the object a class array has an apply method, we can do what? Speak on as in one voice. Well, I guess that's one silent voice, but um, okay, so you can do this. You can, call, because the class has, has an apply method, we can call, for an instance of that class, we can treat it as if it's a function call. We can say, give me the thing at the array index 2, right? Give me the thing at the array index 0. Boom. Um, right? That's because an instance of the class as an apply method, because you put apply in the class. But it's because the object has an apply method, ladies and gentlemen, that we can do this guy. Is that clear? Okay. Brush off those dove weapon, caught webs in, in Scala. Okay. Um, now, that was just the beginning. We have this apply. What's the opposite of apply? Okay. Unapply. Apply's job is to take a bunch of parameters and turn it into an instance of the object. If we have an object O and we have an apply in it, we give it a bunch of things like these numbers and it turns it into an instance. True or not? True. An unapply in an object will do what? Take an instance and turn it into a bunch of... Yeah. Take an instance apart and turn it into a bunch of, a bunch of the pieces. It'll turn it into its pieces. So apply turns the pieces into the whole object. Unapply turns the object into the pieces. Mm -hmm. That's that's unapply in Java. And uh, Java. Scott, excuse me. Um, how could I ever? Um, so ladies and gentlemen, we have this unapply and apply, and we can use them um, within within our constructs. And it's very common when we have case classes, and indeed when we have regular expressions, to rely heavily on unapply to do destructuring of objects. So in this case, we can use, in order to parse these sorts of contexts, we can use uh, a parser uh, like 
like this one, okay? Um, so here we have uh, unapply and apply, um, which are, are being used. We are, for example, here creating an array of things, and there we have an apply on the array object, not the array class. Array class, apply would be taking an array, and we saw it earlier. Uh, an object, if array class apply would be doing this type of thing where we, where we, uh, where we're calling an instance. But this is an example of object uh, array apply, and we're creating here a bunch of regular expressions. We create them in Scala with this dot r um, on a string. What do these triple stri triple quotes do? Yeah, it creates a raw string, and uh, we have two ways of denoting that nicely. One is it's that sort of way, or we could have said raw foo, something like that. And and what's the key? Why why do we want these raw strings? Because regular expressions require special characters, and we don't want to escape. Yeah, these regular expressions require special characters. The regular expression has an understanding of what's meant by backslash s. And if we don't have this in a raw string, if this were just a plain old string, Scala's going to look inside of it and say, oh, backslash s, that means <coughs> something and, and sort of Scala's string syntax, just like backslash n means something, right? A new line. And so it's going to it's gonna fiddle with, it's going to frob, in fact. Well, OK, it's more like fiddle with the internals of that, OK? It's gonna it's gonna turn them into things that we didn't intend. The regular expression won't even see them. It's gonna turn this into a new line, and the regular expression object won't even see it when we turn it into regular expression because backslash whatever has been turned into some thing by the rules of strings. We actually want the backslashes in here to turn to be seen by the regular expression. So we want these things to be raw strings, not merely regular strings, okay? So I created a bunch of these regexps. And these regexps, what they lack in beauty, they gain in functionality. Um, so for each of these types of regex expressions, I created uh, of, of dates, I created a corresponding regex expression. So for Sunday, February 8th, and so on, what I did is I, I created something that allows for, you know, uh, a, a sequence of things drawn from A through Z in either cap or, or lowercase form, followed by any number of different spaces, followed by a comma, now we're after, after that, uh, followed by any number of spaces. And then, now this is where I got down to work. What, I put in a parentheses here. What does that parentheses denote? It's yeah, it's a group. It's capturing what's ever inside of here. And it's going to capture it so I can I can obtain it later. And particularly I can using destructuring in my matches, I can obtain it. Right? So I, I capture the first. I remember the February, the the thing that turns out in this particular instance on the right here is February. So I should be for the, for the uh, sake of any uh, viewers um, online and yourself as you're reviewing for the final, I'm talking about this guy here. This is remembering the sort of uh, February component here. What is this guy remembering? These two digits. This, this, this little thing inside the, the curly brackets um, is, uh, is indicating there's two of the preceding things, in this case, digits. And because there's parens around them, it's remembering that, right? It's, it's remembering it as a match. And then we have some, some potential space and a comma and some potential space. And then I have a four digit thing here, which is, uh, in fact, the, um, uh, the year. And then what's this guy here? Well, that's the, that's the number here, okay? Um, so uh, that's after a tab, and I, I put it as a single tab. So that was for this format. This is the corresponding regex, this top one. Um, it's called day of week, comma, month, comma, no, sorry, day of week, comma, month, day, two, comma, year. Um, 
Uh, and for this one, I have a different regular expression. I start from the get-go remembering things because the very first thing is the month, the number of the month, and then it's, it's a dash with potential space around it, and then um, one or more numbers, and then four, four uh, digits at the end after another uh, dash. Anyway, so I, I create this as regular expressions. Why are they regular expressions? Because of this dot r. The raw here, the raw string is just still a string until we call dot r on it, and that turns any, any old string into a regular expression. So these re's, these are all regular expressions. Mm -hmm. The regular expressions. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Now, um, for iterating through it, you know, <clears throat> I, I could have done it more beautifully in, in retrospect, uh, but um, but here I, I did a, a simple approach. Basically, I got a lines iterator from a file, just like we've used this to get from URL before, get some text, it's got from the file, and I told it what the encoding um, is. Um, we no longer live in a world where you can assume only ASCII, you know, lower lower number of ASCII characters as a professional developer you have to do that. And then basically for each line in this, I used a match construct. And I basically used cases associated with these regular expressions um, to destructure these. So what is can anyone say this very first case here in this match, what is that doing? What's going on here? It's taking the string and it's seeing if it can capture and break it up into these pieces. Good. And the pieces, give me the name of the first piece. Yeah, Month name. Month name. And then day two. And then year. Those things, and, and I'm, one of the reasons I wanted to go through a little exercise with this, because it's a little bit confusing if you haven't seen match expressions uh, before, if you haven't seen pattern matching before. No, I think many of you in 340 have seen that. Is that correct? You've seen pattern matching used in the in the Haskell context? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, but some of you are as of yet innocent of that. And, um, and this may be challenging to read at, at first glance because it almost looks like this is a function call to the regular expression but actually it's applying unapply for that regular expression, the regular, regular expression class. It's actually unapplying it. It's allowing you to take apart the regular expression object into these pieces. The first one being bound to month name, the second day two, the third day year, and the fourth to uh, count for day. <clears throat> okay? Um, and having bound those, by this match, if it finds them properly, um, if it's successfully bound them, then what it's going to do is it's going to apply this this match construct, where we're going to print the year, the day, and the count for day. Now, what's going on with this string? This this um, exercise could have been called fun with strings. Um, although you might have disagreed how fun it was. Um, I, for me, it was just great. <laughs> I, loved, I loved it. Uh, I know that isn't necessarily recommended to you. Um, let, let's make this larger. Um, uh, OK, um, mumble, uh, Kate, Kate, OK, here we go. Um, OK, um, ladies and gentlemen, so here we have this destructuring of this regular expression, if this successfully works and, it, and it's got all of those, then we are going to use this print. And uh, in this case, it's printf. What does this s thing have to do here? Imagine if on the final exam I asked you, what does this s in front of this do? Let's you do that variable interpolation. Yeah, let's see. Do the variable, and it's not just variable. In fact, it's expression interpolation. But variable is the kind of how it's being used. Happens to be how it's used here. But be aware that it supports a broader set of things. So here, basically, it's allowing. It looks. Oh, there's a dollar sign followed by this thing, and and if it's just a name here, it'll try to look for a variable called that and stick its value into that. Okay. Um, and. Uh, 
And I did something crazy here. Man, I, I don't know what I was doing. Okay. Um, I was having too much fun, maybe, and, um, and I, I toned out for a minute. Um, how could I improve this, this code? What do I have? I have this dollar sign D. What's, what's that? What am I using for that? I'm getting the month number for the month name, but I could do it more beautifully than that. How could I improve the beauty of this further? Please don't tell me turn into C. <laughs> you can inline the month number for name expression using the expression. Exactly. So um, Chris is normal on top of it. So I can do this sort of thing. Um, I can actually turn it. And unfortunately, this is, as, as luck would have it, it's, it's, it's broken the line just at the, the wrong, wrong point here. Um, oh, come on. Um, OK. Um, just while the world is watching, we have to break a line there. OK. Um, OK, you're going to have to do that. OK, fine. Um, do it like this. Um, so here, ladies and gentlemen, this dollar sign with the curly brackets means basically execute whatever's in here as code and substitute its return value. So none of these stinking percent percent things um, for you in Scala. You can actually have it substitute in the results of ex whole expressions or or uh, values or uh, variables and values here. Okay, just substitute them in. Um, and uh, this is a substitution string, not a raw string. So this backslash n gets interpreted as a new line. Scala sees that. The lexer looks at that and says, oh, well, that's, a, that's not a new line. It'll turn it into a new line character internally, um, rather than keeping it as backslash n. Um, OK, so, so here we're parsing each type, but we're turning it into that. And we've got some mechanisms which are Sort of going and and um, uh, going and reporting, and then I have a a, a thing that that handles uh, has this case of sort of unrecognized uh, line here. But the basic deal here is that in order to uh, break it up, I use regular expressions. It destructures it into these pieces and uh, allows me to print it out. That was the main thing I wanted you to have experience, with which I wanted you to have experience. And I wanted you to know that this is calling on apply here. It's calling on apply to break it up into pieces, OK? And, uh, and that's, um, that's a, useful, uh, a useful thing to be aware of. There's apply, and then there's unapply as kind of duals. Um, in order to get this month number for month name, um, I used index where. Basically, I, I uh, look up, okay, what's the index of that element within some array of, of uh, strings? I, I probably shouldn't have used just an array, but, but I did. And so I asked, what's the index of the thing where the candidate month name equals uh, the month name that that is given here, month name. And uh, finding that index, I add one to it to get the number for the month name. Okay, So uh, regular expressions, apply, unapply, um, uh, match expressions. Those are things which I ask you to feel comfortable with. Um, you know, within the, the Scala context, uh, those of you who have taken the, the 340 will have you know, benefited from previous exposure to the, uh, to the pattern matching. This sort of pattern matching is very common in functional programming. Say, so if it's a failure, do this, and, and a value is uh, sort of a name is bound to the appropriate, appropriate thing. If it's a success, do this. Um, that would be for a try expression, or if it's sum x, for, imagine for a, a, an option, sum x will extract the x and let you use it, or if it matches none, you do something else. Um, using matches is very common within the functional programming context in Scala by extension. Any questions about this code? Yes? Can I just take a look at how you handle the exception of no case back? Yeah, yeah. Um, the truth is, I was having too much fun. I punted on it. I think let let let's go check though, okay? Because I did actually put in some machinery um, for this, but because I created this answer a while ago, anticipating this early in the semester, I I uh, completely punted. Um, 
looks like I put in the mechanism to handle it, and then I just said, okay, mumble. Um, so, so I actually didn't properly handle that. And I think in my exercise, did I say you weren't responsible for doing that? I'm not sure. You didn't okay. say it specifically. I didn't. It wasn't required. Yeah. So um, I, I, I punted. If I wanted to handle that, how would I handle that? Give me, give me a way that I can handle it pretty well. Case underscore works well. Exactly. Oh, oh of course. Um, uh, well, OK. OK, sorry. There's two levels of, of issue here. And, and I'm sorry, um, I, I was mistaken when I said I didn't handle it all. I handled one, but not both, okay? The one that I did handle was where it was a line that was in none of these given forms. So it was a line that, that didn't match any of these four forms. For that case, it would fall through each of these and it would it would say, um, you know, uh, uh, do I have a string? So it's saying, do I have one of these regular expressions that match this? Uh, if not, it falls down to the next one. Um, do I have here, it falls to the next one, falls to the next one. And then if it didn't match any of those, this is going to match something where it's a string. It's at least a string. That's going to match any, any string there. Um, and then I, I do print out something that says, hey, you're, you know, I have some unrecognized thing. But where I punted, where I punted in a most ignominious fashion, a most shameful fashion, um, and I, I stand before you half blushing, um, is I punted for cases where, like, the month name was misspelled or where the day was an illegal day. It was day 32 something like that, right? Um, or um, where it was where it was three digits instead of um, a three digit day, one, two, three, you know, is the day or something. And, and there I, I really didn't do a good job. What I could do is handle a bunch of those cases, you know, in these contexts. So, so for this, if it matches that, um, basically you look up month number for month name and, and uh, First, and basically you would check, okay, does it return some or none? You, would, you return some of n if it's a legal month, otherwise you return none. And you would handle that right in here in terms of what you print out. And you'd probably do it with an if else uh, to handle that. And the same thing with this ne these next, next few. You can basically see, okay, um, is this a legal month and if so, Print it this way, otherwise that way. The same thing with the day and uh, and with the the year. Okay, so um, so I I punted on that and I, I stand uh, stand ashamed. Okay, other questions. Okay, how would you do this in C? I share your sentiment. I share your sentiment. Um, there are times where trying to automate it and see is is just it's just too painful. I mean, I don't know how much time you folks have spent doing string manipulation in C, but string manipulation in C lacks the the elegance of string manipulation in Scala, and um, to say that is somewhat of an understatement. Um, so it, it really wouldn't be that pleasant to do and see, that's for sure. I, I would not look forward to it, and I would not characterize that activity as fun. Okay. Could you explain how the unapply is working here? Yeah. So what's going on here is that we have an unapply, which is being, um, which is, is being applied at, at each of these um, locations, okay? And the unapply operator uh, for regexp is being applied to take to take the string being matched here and to see can we use using the unapply associated with this regular expression type, can we 
can we successfully call unapply? And when you successfully call unapply, it's going to return either a, I think it returns an option. I actually have slides of this I'll pull up in just a second. But it returns something which basically indicates, the unapply operator indicates when you call it on the thing being matched here, stir line. It returns back something, and I think it's an option that's either sum of x, sum of a sequence, or none, okay? And based on that, if it's none, it didn't match, and it goes on to the next one, and it goes on to the next one, and it goes on to the next one. So when unapply is being, is being called, it is doing so on the thing being matched, in this case, stir line, and it is then returning if successful, a sequence, which which have to do with each of the elements here. I, I may be wrong in the details of it. Actually, I'm, I'm doubting whether it's a sequence. And it's returning some 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 uh, tuple. Maybe it is a, a tuple because it's different types. Okay, that, that might be might be uh, matched here. And if it returns none, it just goes on to the next one. It just goes on to the next. Goes on to the next. If it successfully returns something, each of these guys is bound. This guy, month name, day two, year, count for date, is bound to the elements of that thing that it returns, and it executes uh, this uh, appropriate um, and this appropriate code here. I would note that you can actually create, and this to people who are from C background or Java backgrounds can be freaky the first time you see it. You can actually have a case not inside a match. And a case not inside a match will actually destructure the things you're giving it. Um, uh, and you can actually do so using a, uh, it's a function syntax, right? We say case this, and that's going to take it apart. And then having taken it apart, we take those things. This is the, the function syntax, this arrow syntax. And then we return whatever's returned after the error, right? Which in this case, this is from depth. We do that. And um, we'll, often, we'll often do that within the context of, uh, of Scala. So, so watch this, for example. Um, just trying to come up with a, a nice little example here. Um, OK, so I have my array. Oops, my R. There we are. And I'm going to create a my R2, OK, which is going to have um, less beautiful numbers, um, uh, 17, uh, 22, okay? Here, oh, oh my gosh, I overwrote my beautiful right. Okay, um, sorry, sorry. It, your, your level of, of worry about it is less than mine. Okay, um, so here's my R, my R2, okay? Um, and actually, I need one more thing in my R2 for this to be a, a fulsome example. Here it is. So each of those, my R and my R2, each have four items in them. And as a result, I can do a zip of them. What's that going to give me? Yeah, my R dot my R2, oops, dot, what am I doing? Dot zip is going to give me an array of tuples, right? Um, here it is. It's an array of those tuples. You notice because it's tuples, tuples could have you know a double and then a string, for example. So my R two could have been, um, okay. I, I'm in an Australian mood today, so I'm going to make this just to illustrate this. My R um, uh, 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 mammals. Um, uh, I'm going to say uh, the um, uh, platypus. Uh, platypus. Um, the echidna, um, the uh, kangaroo, and the uh, wombat. Okay, um, there we are. My R mammals. Okay, um, these two, these first two are monotremes. They lay eggs. Um, they nurse through the skin. There's no nipples. They they nurse the milk through the skin. Um, kangaroos um, and uh, and wombats are are uh, are uh, marsupials, like uh, North American opossums. Okay, um, uh, my R dot zip um, my R mammals. 
this is going to create a tuple array of double and string, okay? Where the most unexpected pairing, um, uh, platypus is joined with something close to pi, and um, and uh, something close to e is joined with the echidna. Um, uh, appropriately enough, that starts with an e, and p starts for platypus starts with a with the same digit as pi. Um, okay, and then we have the kangaroo with one and and Zero, I think, is for the wombat. Um, uh, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, here we have a zip. And having done that, now you have an array. So this takes this takes two arrays of doubles. Well, an array of double array of string, two arrays. And it turns them into an array of tuples. Array of two. Two arrays are turned into an array of tuples. Of, um, array of two pairs, an array of two tuples of pairs. You see that? Zip. Now, if we wanted to process that, there's, um, there's basically two ways. Okay, I'm sorry. I just love Scala so much. I, I can't stop here. So, uh, so I'll wrap this up soon, okay? Um, but ladies and gentlemen, um, if we want to capture this, we can actually do so. This is all an answer to Tushita's question, although she may be wondering um, why. Okay, so if we wanted to process this, how could we process this? What could we, what could we do to map this? Hmm? A case in the middle of nowhere. Sorry? A case in the middle of nowhere. Uh, yeah, so, so we're going to have a case, exactly. So having done this, this is an array of this, so we could have a map, and what is the map gonna take in as an argument? So the function given to map, what is it gonna take in as an argument? It's gonna take in a tuple, ladies and gentlemen. It's gonna take in a tuple two, which is, which is something which is um, gonna be a pair, we'll call it a, a pair, okay, and no, have it to, Im to import immutable pair in Java for you, for Scala. It's built into the language, thankfully. Um, so here we take in a pair, and then we could ask for the, you know, the, we could concatenate the, the two elements, right? We do pair dot underbar two, take the second element of the pair, and we'll plus it with pair underbar one to create a, a most unseemly sort of set of string, right? Um, this is, perhaps it's the name of a platypus, so one of the platypus pawns that I observed. Um, uh, so, um, ladies and gentlemen, here we are actually taking in a pair, and one thing would be nice to do, but you actually um, uh, can't do immediately with the syntax is, is, is if you could say, you know, um, um, something like uh, num and str or something like that. Oh, sorry. You cannot do this. It's going to be an unhappy camper um, if you do something like this because, not just because pair is there. If we try to do something like this uh, or str, uh, str plus num, it's going to be, um, it's going to be unhappy. Why is that, it, that it's unhappy? unpack it, ladies and gentlemen. What comes out of this zip is an array of, it's a collection of pairs. And what this is expecting are two distinct numbers given to it. Now there's two ways to deal with this in Scala. One, one involving case. And this brings us back to the Tushita question, unbeknownst to her. Okay, um, so one, one way we could do this would be to do something like, and I'm going to have to be careful about about how we do this. Um, I think I think the syntax is uh, no 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 no. It's not that. Um, uh, uh, um, this is the syntax. This is the syntax. I'm pretty sure. Yes. Um, yes. Yes, there we go. So here's a case 
a, a, a disembodied case, as, as Connor might have put it. Um, uh, so here, ladies and gentlemen, you could think of it as a case in a pouch um, from, from an Australian perspective. Um, so, so here we have code, and this, is, this brackets are indicating it's code, and this code basically takes in a pair of, 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 of it takes in a, a pair, and it destructures it into a number and a string, and it then, it then concatenates. Do you see that? So case enforces pattern uh, Sorry? Case enforces pattern uh, Yes, case, case calls unapply on the thing given to it uh, to, to take it apart. And in this case, unapply for tuple two takes it apart into the pieces, to the appropriate pieces, which are num and string, num and str. It binds those, the output. So case calls unapply here. Okay. Could you call that apply yourself? Yes, we we could, um, but I'm I'm not gonna uh, show you that spectacle um, today. Okay, um, you, you've you've seen enough of the Australian fauna already. Um, so this is the first way, and you said there's another way. Yeah, there's another way. It's more, it's more beautiful. Do you want to see it? Yeah. Okay, far be it for me to blow against the wind. Um, okay, so so you want to see that? Okay. Um, okay, this this is cool. This is cool, okay? Um, create a zipped, okay? And then, ladies and gentlemen, you can just do it this, this, uh, okay. Uh, oh gosh, it's not zipped, it's, oh gosh. Um, uh, zipped, um, uh, okay. Um, I, I, it, 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 forgive me uh, as I flail. Hold on for just a second. Um, uh, it's in my, it's in my lectures. Um, zipped. Um, sorry. Sorry. What before zipped? Oh, uh, no, no, no. Zipped actually. Um, it actually does. It does the the. It's the right basic thing here. It's just uh, there's there's some detail off. Keep on suggesting things they, though. They, they get to the, those two arrays before. Mm -hmm. I mean, array one, array two in bracket dot zipped. Dot zipped. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, that. Uh, okay. Uh, like that. Okay. Cool. That is cool. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen, in Australia, thanks. You. Um, so here we have a tuple of values, and we turn it into we turn it into actually a a zipped a thing called zipped. If you actually look, what comes out of that? It's a construct called a a, a zipped thing. I think um, tuple two zipped. And what that allows you to do is to then map, to do a map of it on the on on the underlying. Um, uh, so if this is a tuple two, it allows you to take two items here because and 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 apply those. So it actually matches both of those. It it has tuple two zipped has a map function where you give it a function that takes two things, not just one thing, okay? So contrast this, here mapped takes a function taking two things and does something with it to what we had earlier where we had, um, where we had this guy, um, uh, okay, uh, this one here, where we had zip. What comes out of this? What comes out of that? An array of, of pairs. An array of tuples, right? Tuple twos. And then when we map that, we have to deal with pairs because it's an array of pairs. It's an array of, of tuples, so, so we have to get a pair out and then we can then we can refer to items in it. This underbar two is what? What is that underbar two? The second element of the pair. This is the first element. Okay. 
Um, that, that was when we had a, so to be clear here, that, that my array zip of array mammals gave me an array of pairs. And because of that, when I needed to map them, I needed to, to have a pair here. But now, with this zipped, ladies and gentlemen, this zipped uh, at this point is giving me an array of, it's, it's giving me an array of, uh, uh, excuse me, it's actually giving me, I think, an iterator of this. In any case, it's a, of tuple two zips. And those know how to take a function that doesn't take one thing, a pair, it takes two things because it's a tuple two zip, and it, it allows me to then process them as if I am you know, knowing about these two things. If it was a tuple three zip, it would allow me to have, give it a function that takes three things in and applies things to them. Hmm? Neat or not? <laughs> okay, I don't require all my students to share my enthusiasm. Um, the other thing we did though, and, and this is getting back to the, the question of Tushita, is we have this case, and, and it's because case calls on apply. What's going on here is that we are zipping up these two things, we're mapping them, and this map, what do we give map to do its job? We give it a what? What does it need to do its job? A function, and that function here basically operates by calling on apply and what it's given, which takes it into string and num and, and, and uses those appropriately. So it's quite common in, in, in uh, Scala code by people who've been around it for a while to see this sort of case used uh, just like that. You use it to break things apart by calling on apply on them, okay? Now, for anyone who's interested in knowing more, um, uh, not about the Australian fauna, but about uh, these components of Scala and about unapply and apply, I would refer you to some slides that I posted earlier. There was a, um, uh, there was a in, uh, introduction to Scala that I provided, and I'll make sure that those items uh, are successfully in there, but there was a treatment in that of, um, uh, of unapply and apply um, here in, in this kind of matching uh, matching context, okay? Um, and uh, I think I actually deal in quite some, and I'm gonna have to find the exact slides, but I basically I deal in some detail with showing how unapply works um, in terms of its operation. And I'd refer you to uh, those slides, okay? I'll, uh, and later today, I'll post to the class where you can find those exact slides if you're interested in knowing more how unapplied works. But it's no magic that, you know, it, it takes the thing being matched by the case and it calls off to unapply and unapply indicates something, did it match or not? And if it did match, it gives back the set of things that matched, I think it's a tuple and it, and it, can, it can appropriately uh, take those apart, okay? Um, Okay, so that's uh, regex, unapply, apply, um, and uh, Scala strings uh, that I wanted you to uh, see. And you even got a bit of an introduction to zip, zipping again, and to zip to, and even to the mammals uh, down under. Okay, any other questions about this? Okay, with that, I will uh, conclude that component. Um, uh, of the lecture, um, and we will now continue on <clears throat> to the main lecture. Um,